Okay, so today we're going to talk about Excel basics or spreadsheet basics in general. I got my blue blocker glasses on. I'm ready to roll. Okay, so this is Office 365, like the landing page. You can get to Office a couple of different ways. If you have it installed on your computer, like I have it installed on this computer, when you have that, I just use it straight from the computer. It's always faster because you don't have to, like, it doesn't have to interact with anything online. So, like, normally I would just open my little Excel and I would go. But if you're on a Chromebook or you're at home and you don't have this, um, we do have access to Office 365 through the school. So I'm going to show you how to use that. So when I go into my Office 365 homepage, I come here and I'll show you. This is if you're in UmbleISD, you have your My Umble, and it's listed here. It's this orange one that says Office 365. If you're not, you have access to it some other way. Okay, so these over here are the programs. So there's Microsoft Word, which is the same as Google Docs, but better. Um, there's Excel, which is kind of like Google Sheets, but way better. <clears throat> there's PowerPoint, which is um, the Microsoft Office version of Google Slides. Like this is the OG. So the OG stuff is generally better anyway. Okay, we're going to Excel, and I already pushed that, so I'm here. I want new blank worksheet or new blank workbook. That's what I want. I'm going to put this over here so I have it out of the way. Okay. I'm going to get this out of the way. Okay, so this is pulling up. And already we see wild and craziness, right? There, there are grids and numbers and letters and okay. This is just Excel. So while this rest of it's opening up, you'll see that right here, like along the top, you have all these letters. These letters are the column labels, right? So this is column A, this is column B, this is column C. On the side, you have a bunch of numbers, and those are the, the labels for the rows. So this is row 1. This would be row 9. Each of these little individual boxes is called a cell, and each cell has a location. And the location is generally, um, like we label that using the column and the and the row label. So this one would be J17. This column right, I mean, this cell right here is in column E, row 8. So this would be E8. So when we're setting up formulas and making it do stuff, we're going to refer to our different cells rather than hard code the numbers in. So we would recur, we would refer, like if we wanted to do that, we would refer to E8. So that's important to know. This right here, this middle part is called your form formula bar. That's where you type everything in. But really, like, if you're right here, if I put stuff, see how it shows up in my formula bar? But if I wanted to go back and correct, I could come up and I could do that. Okay, so you have all of these normal tabs like you would in Word or Sheets or Docs, like Google Docs. You have all of these things. They have all kind of stuff, um, and that's great. So the first thing I always do when I'm opening a new sheet or when I'm creating something new is I always I always come down here to these tabs. So you can think about Excel as being like a workbook. You know, like, how, or not a workbook, a notebook. So you know how, like, if you have a five-subject notebook, you have your papers and then you have a tab, so you have different sections. These down here are like your little different sections. So right now I'm on sheet one. That's all of this. And the first thing I want to do is I want to rename that. So, like, let's say I want to call it class size. That is something I've been doing lately, keeping track of my class size to see how many kids I have um, in my virtual classes, how many I have face-to-face -face and what percent are face-to-face. -face. So we can just set up that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to right-click, and it pulls up here I can choose. If you're on a Chromebook, if you want to right-click in your little, the little, pad thingy, the little touchpad thingy. If you touch with two fingers at the same time like this, that's a right click. Okay, so rename, and I'm going to call this class size. And then I hit OK or I hit Enter. And notice how this name changed. So then if I want another tab, like a lot of times what I'll do is for whatever unit I'm in, whatever formulas we're working on, um, I'll have the students work them out by hand usually, but what I do is I'll create myself a, an Excel spreadsheet because then it makes it a whole lot easier for me to check notes or like to check the work and I don't have to like go in and put in my calculator every little thing. I just take their inputs, I stick it in, it calculates it for me. 
So I, I usually have a bunch of tabs. So I'll have one for each topic. So like, let's say I add one, you just push this plus, it gives me another, it's like a divider, right? It gives you another section in your notebook. So I'm gonna call this one averages because we're gonna do that. Averages. And notice, see now I have like this other little tab down here. Okay, so back to class size. So once I have my once I have my little tab set up, the first thing I do is I put a title because you create these spreadsheets, but then later on you'll come back and you'll be like, well, what in the world was I doing? Like, what what even is this? Like, there are numbers everywhere, and it's it's terrible. You don't know what it is. It could be super useful, but you have no way of knowing. The best thing to do is to label everything and add notes like this doesn't matter like if you if all your work is over here you could have all kind of notes over here like this was to keep track of stuff or i could put um only enter data in the oops in the purple boxes usually i i, I like to color code things it keeps everything straight Okay, so that's just like general notes. So what I want to do is I want to create a title because I want to I want to make it easy for me to use it when I come back in. The first thing I want to do if I type something in here, so like let's say class size. Class size calculation. Notice how like I was here in A1, but it kind of spilled over into B1 and into C1 because it's too long, right? But if I type something in B1, all of a sudden it cuts it off, right? That's not good. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to see my full title. And the best way to do that is I want to make this box right here bigger. Like I don't, I don't want to make, so I can change the size of columns. Like I could click here and I could drag, but then notice how all of the rest of my column A is that big. I don't want it that big. I'm going to control Z to undo that. I just want this one thing big. So I can do that. This button right here is called Merge and Center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here. I'm going to highlight the boxes that I want to put together. I'm going to make them one cell. So I'm going to highlight A, B, C. I'm going to go to E. So notice these are all highlighted. If I push this Merge and Center, it takes those boxes. It puts them together as one, and then it centers whatever I wrote, and it puts it in the middle. Ta-da. Oh. Now I want to make this visible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the size. So I can change the font size using this. Or if I just want to make it bigger, I can push the A with the arrow up. So I'll make it like that. And I want to make it bold. So that's, these are just like what you would see in Word or Docs or any of the other ones. They're all pretty standard. The other thing I want to do is I like color coding my stuff. So this little paint bucket will let me color code that one cell. So I'm going to make this and I'll make it blue. You can change the color of your writing too. So like say I made this really dark blue. But see now I can't see my class size calculations. I can go over here and see where it says this A with this color underneath. If I click on that. I can check, let's say I make it yellow. See, now I can, I can see that. Okay. I'm just going to leave it because I don't really care. Okay. Or actually, no, I'm going to undo both of those. So control Z, control Z, control Z. Let's say I don't want to color code it. Let's say I just want to put a line underneath. So you don't want to use this underline. What the underline does is it only underlines the letter. So see, only this is underlined, but that's not what I want. I want to, I want a line under this whole title. So anytime you want to put a line, you highlight whatever boxes you want the line under, and then you go to this one. So see all these borders? So there are tons of things that you could do. So I like this thick bottom border. I do that a lot on like titles or final answers and stuff. So if I click off, notice this is this whole thing is underlined, not just the letters. Okay. So next I need some labels. I have my second period is virtual, so I'm going to put V2. First period I have off, so that's my conference period. So I'm just going to leave that. This is my third period. And I can even put a title up here. Let's put period. And then so virtual, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So those are my periods. 
And then right here, what I want is I want to, I want to put the date because I'm, I'm tracking these things. Like at the start of school, I had like 170 something kids. I think I'm up to 210 or 212. So I'm trying to see how this changes over time. So I'm going to put a date. So I'm going to put today's the October the 2nd. So I'm going to put 10 to 20. If I type it in like this, usually it automatically recognizes it as a date. But if it didn't, what I can do is I can do this. Oh, see right here? This little box tells you what, what it's formatted to. If I put, like, let me delete that out. So notice how down in here, like when I type, it just says general. So it's just a general box. It could be numbers, it could be letters, it doesn't matter. This right here, since I put it 10-2-20, it automatically formatted it to date. If you go down, you could, you could do this. So this is short date, long date. I'm going to put 10 slash 2. And it automatically did that. So let's see what it has. Oh, wrong one. So it doesn't tell me which one. Let's see, short date. I guess that's that. What does long date look like? Oh, see, it writes out like Friday, October 2nd. That's pretty big. I don't really want anything that wide because each one of these is going to have a date. Let's put that back to short. Okay. And... That came out way too big, so I'm going to put that back to. I could have put Control Z and it would have done that, whatever. Okay, so let's say, and like, see, this is like not lined up. I like my things to be lined up. And also, usually, if I have a title, I'll make it bold or a label just so I know that that's not data. It's, it's like the actual label. So I want these, first of all, I want these to all line up. If you go right here to the alignment section, it'll let you line them up. So I'm going to put the center one. See, now they're all nice and neat in, in a row. And I'm going to put bold. Ta-da. And up here, I'm going to put this bold too. I'm just highlighting several out. Because then if I put something in, so if I put 10, 12, 20, it's automatically bold. And it's automatically squiggle because it's not like, it's not, it's not, a, let's see, October 12th. Uh, see? What that means when you get these little hashtags is it means it's not wide enough. So if I widen it out, now it fits. And now it's not hashtags. So I'd probably have to do this for these two. Go mess with that later. Also, if I have like a table, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and underline the tops and the sides too, just so that, that way, like it's separated out. That one, I want the right side. So I just put right side. And then underneath this, I want to be able to add them up. And this I want to make bold too. And I also want it lined up. And I'm going to put a line under this. I'm going to make it thicker. OK. So now I just have to put how many people I have. So let's say I have 118 here. And I have um, 19, 20, 20, 15, 22, 13. Those aren't my actual class numbers. We'll pretend. Okay, so this is the number of people in every single one of my classes, so I input those. And what I want is I want it to add up. So I can make it do that. Excel has formulas for that. Now, anytime you want to make Excel do math, you have to tell it, hey, Excel, we're going to do math now. So I want this to add up. So what I want to do is I want to go equals. The equal sign says, hey, wake up, let's do math. Now, I can add these individually. So I could go this plus, and then I click on this one, plus. Notice I'm not typing any numbers in. I'm only referencing cells. So I could do that. That's a lot of clicking. I don't want to, I'm, no. That's just extra. Excel has formulas. We can use their formulas. They're built in. So what I'm going to do instead, because it's easier and it's built in, and that's the beauty of Excel, is I want to make, if you add something up, it's called a sum, right? Well, their formula is called sum. So you go equals S-U-M for sum. And notice this whole list of formulas come up. I just want this basic one. So then if I open parentheses, that's going to tell it, hey, this is what I want to add. And all I do then is I highlight these cells. Notice there's like a, a wiggly box around them. And it says B3 colon B8. That means the cell is from B3 down to B8. When I close parentheses, it says, these are the ones I'm adding. If I hit enter, it gives me the total. 
See, it added it all up. I didn't have to do a thing. So like, let's do it for this one. So let's say I had, my classes went up. I have 120 there, 20 there, 21 there, 16, 23, and 17. So um, I'll show you later there's a shortcut to not have to retype this formula. But I'm going to go ahead and type it again for the practice. So equals SUM. And then we open parentheses to tell it what we want to add. We highlight the ones we want to add. Close parentheses. Ta-da! So now I have 217 people. So this, this is basically just setting everything up. We're going to have some more videos um, and go over this a little bit more. But so we opened it. We created tabs. We created a heading up here. We put our little labels. We put in our numbers. And then we made it add everything up. So this is a first introduction. There's, we're going to be working with this quite a bit. Okay.